adjusting the superb Transwave three-phase converter in my shed workshop. Taking a look inside the unit, caution, this is not recommended. First of all, I'd like to demonstrate what the problem is. It's just not working properly. My old Boxford lathe has a three-phase motor, but in my workshop, I only have a single-phase supply, and that's where the Transwave comes in. The general idea is that you position the rotary switch on the front to match the requirements of your lathe motor. But if you get it wrong, the boost is on all the time and this will burn out the motor. You can see what the different settings are doing. For the last 10 years in my workshop, I've always used position number two and it's always been okay, but alas, no it isn't anymore. If I use position 3, my motor makes a noise like this and I really don't think it would last long. I phoned Transwave a few weeks back and spoke to a really helpful man called Pete Moss. And Pete told me to have a look inside the converter and first of all check the state of the capacitors. He said that one of the capacitors could be failing, but he said it was more likely a control box that controls the boost. Before I go any further, I'd just like to say that all I'm doing is going inside this unit to have a look at the components, so I'm not going to explain the theory of operation. If you want to know that, just Google it. On the front of the unit, printed on a yellow label, it says, allow one minute for capacitors to discharge. And that's always a good thing to do, because capacitors will hold the charge, even when the unit isn't plugged into the mains. Once I removed the lid, I could have a look inside. Needless to say, I've unplugged the unit from the mains entirely. In the bottom part of the picture, there's a large transformer, and here are the capacitors. I'm shorting them out at the moment, which is never a good idea, but I know that they're not going to go bang. For two reasons, this is about 10 minutes after I unplugged the unit from the mains, and also, if you look at the capacitors, you can see some resistors across them. In my younger days, when I was a musician, but I'm all right now, I used to work on Hammond organs and valve amplifiers. And over the years, I've had a few shocks from capacitors in electronic equipment, mainly by not giving them time to discharge before working on the piece of equipment. This is a very simple piece of electronics, so why is it not working? One of my theories as to why this unit isn't working is that since I moved the workshop, I'm now in a large shed at the bottom of the garden. It has a full 32 amp supply and its own consumer unit. And this really strange problem with the intermittent boost has only really started since I went into the new workshop. I noticed that the transformer has a 220 volts winding. And although this video is called Taking a Look Inside the Transwave Unit, I couldn't resist switching the wires over. It's only 20 volts, and I thought, well, if the voltage is low to start with, it shouldn't make a difference. So I transferred the two black cables from the 240 volts winding to the 220 volts winding. I wonder if this will work. I stood clear and switched on the unit again, and when I turned the lathe on, guess what? It was exactly the same as it was before I changed the winding over. So much for that idea. So I put the two black wires back where they were in the first place. And not unsurprisingly, I unplugged the unit from the mains first. The heavy transformer and the capacitors are all mounted on the base, but in the lid there are these things. The white box at the top is just a contactor. This is something to do with the boost control, because when the boost light comes on, the contactor engages. And it's the contactor that makes the loud clicking noise as it switches in and out. So what's the red box below it? I'm no expert, but I think this is the boost controller. I powered up the unit one more time and repeatedly switched the lathe on and off. Taking a closer look at this red box, I noticed a piece of insulation tape which was covering some kind of rotary control. I'm not going to show you the removal of the tape because you really should not do this. You should not do this. I also noticed that on the silver printed label, were some voltages. I wonder what happens if I turn this little knob very slightly. Hmm, that's encouraging. I wonder what happens if I turn it some more. I 
back as it was. I'll turn the control whilst it's running and see what happens. Well, it seems to work. At this point, I decided to phone Transwave. And this time, I spoke to a man called Joe, and I told him what I'd done, expecting him to say, oh, no, you shouldn't have done that. But no, he explained what the device did. When I told Joe about the fact that I work in a shed at the bottom of the garden, he said it's probably because the supply voltage, that's the input voltage to the unit, is a bit lower than it should be. And this seems to me to be a very likely explanation. He also mentioned that the rotary control on the small red box was adjusted after manufacture and prior to dispatch, relative to the factory's input voltage. And Joe also explained that the rotary control on the red box is responsible for controlling the point at which boost occurs, and that this boost control energises some higher power capacitors. And this boost just kickstarts the motor, so to speak, to make it run. Problem solved, maybe? I was going to order a new red box, and Joe said, well, you don't need to do that. It looks like this one's working OK, it just needs adjusting relative to the input voltage, which in my shed is just a little bit low, so the threshold at which the boost was kicking in was wrong. Apart from the obvious, this Transwave unit is very, very well made. I find the Transwave company's customer service second to none. And guess what? If this doesn't work, I'm just going to buy another one of these. Simpler than an inverter, and these units do not require you to rewire the lathe. But for the moment, I'm going to leave this unit on the bench just as you see it. It's out of the way at the back of the bench, and I'm going to do some turning on the lathe. Health and safety disclaimer, I do not recommend that you do anything that you've seen in this video. When I first left school, I started an apprenticeship as an electronics engineer. Unfortunately though, even though I had some training, I never finished the apprenticeship. I joined a band, and the rest is history. And that's it for this video, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.